let's get let's get popping let's get started biden signs right wing asylum seeker ban exec order and the dumbest move possible drama and sports nauseated face okay uh, how about you fucking calm down okay how about you chill the freak out frick anyway pressure on israel to sign it's um ceasefire deal tuesday pride month blast off meme yeah that's right it's a proper pint in it it's a proper fucking pint in it yeah yeah it's mental fucking out that's right i like it i like it it's a fucking tuesday and i like it thank you lad you're a proper lad yeah caitlin clark race wars WNBA race war drama and so much more me thinks your chat is a lot of sports ball people oh god ew don't ever type like that in chat ever again mm, me thinks your chat is a lot of sports ball people don't ever say me thinks again but you're right though there is a lot of people in this community and myself included like I've always had like a ugh sports is fucking annoying and being a sports fan is fucking annoying type attitude and I think there's a lot of nerds in here that harbor a lot of resentment towards people who like uh, have exactly the same level of like hyper fixation on a particular uh, particular hobby, but it's like infinitely more normalized. So all the fucking um, all the people that are just like as pathologically obsessed with sports are able to are able to be in normal society as like normies whereas when you have like you know your favorite uh futa youtube content creator and you want your favorite twitch streamer to cover your favorite futa content creator it's all of a sudden a problem you know what i mean it's like sports guys when they come in here and they're like oh dude check out this Kyrie highlight like that's not an issue but when you have like it's oddly specific it, yeah excuse me it's oddly specific as in yesterday there was a guy who literally did that okay there was a guy who literally did that last night he was like Hassan can you please like I don't know if this is relevant or not but I really want you to watch this youtubers YouTube essay about Futa okay so yeah oddly specific I know because it happened and then there were people in the chat getting mad at me because I chose to watch other shit instead of the FUTA video. Once it was established that there was a video about FUTA cock, a YouTube essay about FUTA, every other video that I watched all of a sudden was being matched against that video. And chat immediately was like, uh, why are you watching this silly thing instead of the FUTA video? We would like to watch that video, please. Are you happy that RGG and Amazon are doing a Yakuza series? Brother, you do not fucking understand, okay? What, let's, you know what? Let's start with that. Let's start with some good news, okay? Let's start with actual good news. You feel me? Let's start with that. Let me, I don't even know what, like, what would be my favorite Yakuza song to play? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, Yakuza is being made into a television series which is incredible now why is it incredible because there is no video game that is so perfectly conducive to be a serialized television series if they fuck this up i will be so sad make the choice to take the next step like a dragon yakuza comes to prime video on october 24th had no idea that this was happening and it is incredible. Prime has had a couple bangers under their belt. I am shocked that they were able to put this together without any sort of like, without anyone hearing about it, without anyone even talking about it. Like, how did they do this? There's a Yakuza movie from Japan from 2007. Tell me you're gonna play the game before on stream. Most likely not. Ain't no way they find someone that can portray Kiryu. I'm kind of shocked that they didn't ask me to do it because I feel like I could do such a good job with it because, like, I embody the vibes, you know what I mean? Show chat your favorite Yakuza scene. What? This is not my favorite Yakuza scene, but I'm fucking stoked on this. 
It's going to be set in two time periods, 1995 and 2005. Yeah, I mean, that's the peak Yakuza time uh, periods. You can't even remember your lines on stream half the time. I know. Have you seen to uh, Tokyo Vice? Uh, yes. Directed by Take Masaharu, Kiryu Kazuma, played by Takeuchi Ryoma, is a six-part crime suspense action series set in Kamarocho between two time periods, 1995 and 2005, subtitled and dubbed in 30 languages, releasing in two batches of three episodes on October 25th and November 1st. Did you get that acting role that you were auditioning for a few weeks ago? No. Bro, I'm a, the actor got jacked for the role. <laughs> Okay, not bad. No disrespect to him. No disrespect to him. Like, keep on playing, player. Okay, uh, you know. What was the role? Kazuma! Kiryu-chan! Kiryu would be difficult, but casting Kasuga would be impossible? No. Dude, casting Majima! Garo! Would be impossible. God, I am such a fucking annoying little petulant weeb when it comes to this shit. I love... I love, I love this franchise. Do you understand? This franchise got me fucking literally invested in playing a turn-based game. Okay? I loved the turn-based game Like a Dragon so much. I played, I went back and started playing the other game. The game that came before the last one. Okay? He isn't Japanese, but I hope they have Dong Suk in it. You like the game so much you went to Japan, Lamau? No, I think the game, I, I, I think my love for Japan just happened to coincide perfectly with like my love for Yakuza. I, I think I would say, I would say that like it made me feel when I felt nostalgic about like going back to Japan or, or when I missed Japan, I would just play Yakuza and it would like remind me of how sick it is. There's mods that add back in the normal fighting style. Eh, it's fine. Turn base is actually pretty good. You nailed the Kiryu-chan? Of course I did. I'm a fucking weeb, dude. Kiryu-chan! Kiryu-chan! Kiryu Kazuma-chan, yeah! Kiryu-chan! Amata na Kiryu-chan! Kiryu-chan yattan ka! Kiryu-chan! There was also a bug in the game where it would just say like, Kiryu-chan! Every time you walked into an area where he was supposed to be at, but he wasn't there, so I just kept hearing it over and over again in the game for like a very long time. So it just got stuck in my head. He was just hiding. I just didn't see it, maybe. And my Majima Goro is actually from uh, the underground fighting. There, there's an underground fighting uh, uh, sequence where like there's a there's an announcer that announces the fighters. That announcer's from Pride. Oh yeah, I think so. The previous Japan only movie had the perfect actor for Majima. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, that is that is pretty good. You know what's really funny about the the actors and shit is that these are real people. Like these are literally real people that are mocapped. So I don't know why they don't just like, aren't they like real actors? As a matter of fact, that's what an actor is, bro. Yeah. It's a real story. <laughs> okay. The story is not, <laughs> I don't know about the story. Um, not the main characters, but a lot of the newer characters are no, all of the side characters were always literally mocap. Their faces were always like, I don't think that they were ever like uh, actual actors or whatever, but they were like famous people. Some of them were actors. Yeah. Literally all of it happened. Like, for example, when, um, yeah, when, when, uh, they go to Hawaii, there's a sequence where they fucking have to fight a shark and they just beat the shit out of this, like, Omega shark. And that's real. That literally happened. Like the shark, that was a specific shark that was operating as like a henchman for a cult in Hawaii that, uh, was aligned with the Japanese government in order to, to create a nuclear waste facility, okay? And, um, and this shark was basically, like, getting its ass beat in the back of this, like, fishing boat. So, what the fuck are you talking about, big dog? I'm just being sarcastic. Anyway, um, many of the people casting Kiwami and Kiwami 2 are uh, from those remakes forward are mocapped actors. Yeah. I will recommend. Will you be watching OTK Games Expo? No, I will not. 
Um, no disrespect, but I'm gonna be covering the news instead. Mushroom actor revealed. No, 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 no. Shut up. No. And for people who are asking, like, how do I start Yakuza? Like, which game do you recommend? I recommend the first game. Or I mean, not first game. Sorry, Yakuza Zero. That's what I recommend. Okay. Yeah, because zero is incredible. All right, let's get started with the news, though. I am begging, pleading you to play Judgment and Lost Judgment as RGG Studios takes place in the same universe, and they're some of the absolute best. Oh, is this, uh, yeah, Kuze and Awano exist in real life? Yeah, they're real life people. They're just not as yacked in the real world because, like, they'll mocap their faces and then they'll just make them so yacked in the game. So it'll be funny, like, the dude will have, like, a 50-year-old man's face, but then, simultaneously, while having the, a 50-year-old man's face, he will have the body of, like, the most jacked 24-year-old. And it's pretty funny. All right. Anyway, President Biden's delivering white, uh, uh, remarks in the White House on immigration. Uh... It already ended. He delivered his remarks. It's dumb as fuck. He's a dumbass. Uh, we'll get started on the immigration thing. Um, President Biden securing our border. Now, obviously, the reason why they're doing this, for the record, is because, well, one, because they're dumb, racist assholes, okay? So let's just get that out of the way real quick. Start with India? No, bitch. I'm not going to start with India. You don't get to dictate the content today, okay? Or in, on any other day. Like, what are we doing here? No, there's no top of the hour. It's 1149. Okay? Don't come at me like that. That's ridiculous. Oof, kind of have more important things to handle than a freight crisis at the border. Okay, y'all are being annoying. Oh, my God. All right, we'll get started on the press conference. Um, but yeah, we are a, a nation led by dumb, old, out of touch, reactionary white men. And of course, as is the case, uh, the Democratic Party is doing the absolute, just the absolute worst thing that they could possibly do and lean into their worst possible instincts, as always, as expected. Um, Democratic Party had better chances on immigration and a better way to captivate like uh, a young Latino voter base in places like Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona, places that allowed them to win, mind you. Okay. And they decided, you know what? This election is going to be built around the suburbs. Okay. It's going to be built around the mother freaking Second suburbs, baby. And guess what? That's what we care about. We don't care about anybody else. We are going to do the most right-wing thing we possibly could do. And uh, after only four years ago, running on the exact opposite policies that he is now implementing and celebrating, um, we're just going to say, fuck it. YOLO. Let's do it. Do what the Republicans in Congress refuse to do. Take the necessary steps to secure our border. Four months ago, after weeks of intense negotiation between my staff and Democrats and Republicans, we came to a clear, clear bipartisan deal. It was the strongest border security agreement in decades. But then Republicans in Congress, not all, but walked away from it. Why? Because Donald Trump told them to. He told the Republicans, it has been published widely by many of you, that he didn't want to fix the issue. He wanted to use it to attack me. That's what he wanted to do. It was a cynical and a extremely cynical political move and a complete disservice to the American people who are looking for us to not to weaponize the border, but to fix it. Today, I'm joined by a bipartisan group of governors, members of Congress, mayors, law enforcement officials, most of whom live and work along the southern border. They know the border is not a political issue to be weaponized. Dog, are we pro-Trump now? What? Pro-Trump? Why would we be pro-Trump? If I was pro-Trump, I'd be elated at the fact that his enemy right now, his political enemy who he's running against, has basically given him the greatest gift of all, 
which is legitimacy to the lies that he has spread for years alongside the Republican Party for decades about how immigrants are a national security problem. Okay? If I was pro-Trump, I'd be like, hell yeah, bitch, look at this old fucking asshole. He loves, he, he's right. Joe Brandon, he's, it's such a big problem. Even these commie, godless, pedophile, vampire monsters recognize how much of a rapist immigrants are, and that's why they're doing this asylum seeker bill. And that's precisely why I'm going to keep voting for Donald Trump. He's been right all along. That's it. The responsibility we have to share, to do something about it. They don't have time for the games played in Washington, and neither do the American people. So today, I'm moving past Republican obstruction and using the executive authorities available to me as president to do what I can on my own to address the border. Frankly, I would have preferred to address this issue through bipartisan legislation because that's the only way to actually get the kind of system we have now that's broken, fixed, to hire more Border Patrol agents, more asylum officers, more judges. But Republicans have left me no choice. Today, I'm announcing actions to bar migrants who cross our southern border unlawfully from receiving asylum. Migrants will be restricted from receiving asylum at our southern border unless they seek it after entering through an established lawful process. And those who seek to come to the United States legally, for example, by making an appointment and coming to a port of entry, asylum will still be available to them, still available. But if an individual chooses not to use our legal pathways, if they choose to come without permission and against the law, they'll be restricted from receiving asylum and staying in the United States. This action will help us gain control of our border, restore order into the process. This ban will remain... Bro, this is like... I per... I hate this man so much more than I ever thought I would one year ago. Yeah. I, I love that this is... I love that this is like... Brandon literally looking at the situation and going, honestly, Jack, let me tell you, okay, are we going to be bold? Are we going to be brave? Are we going to lead by example? Fuck no. We are going to do all of the worst things the Democratic Party has done so consistently throughout the years in an election that should not even be remotely close, just like in 2016. An election that should not be close at all is now going to turn into an election that, you know, the Republican Party might actually win. Do you now support protecting the U.S. border? I don't understand. Okay, let's get this out of the way. All right, let's get this out of the way. Yes, I support border protection only at the top of the hour when there's a three-minute ad break. If you want the borders of this fucking stream to not be perished at the top of the hour with a three-minute ad break with some fuck-ass, bullshit-ass fucking ad break segues like that, okay? then you have to subscribe, all right? It just becomes so annoying at the top of the hour. The every 10 minutes up until the top of the hour, every chatter becomes like the most annoying fucking gray name, okay? In an effort to get my attention, in an effort to try to get me to be baited, all right? So, yes, we're doing it. We're not, we're, the two parters are getting annoying. They're getting to me, okay? Here's the three-minute ad break now at the top of the hour. It's not even $5 any longer. It's going to be $6 or free with a Twitch Prime. Yeah. Would you stop if, it if you could? What do you mean? I vote we ban two-part base. There's an art in getting you with a single message over slagging. I, I agree. Twitch inflation. Inflation has hit Twitch as well, folks. In any case, in any case, I personally find it insane. I don't understand. I thought the migrants who come through the border illegally are at risk of being taken advantage of as slaves. What? Are you also trying to do a bait? Like, what's happening here? What's happening? 27 month subscriber. What? I'm ignorant. Okay. Um, I don't understand. I thought the migrants who come through the border illegally are at risk of being taken advantage of as slaves. Yes, there's a two-tier labor process in this country. The only way to solve that labor process... Uh, the only way to solve that structure is, is, okay, by legalizing the undocumented migrants. The entire, the entire criminalization of like, uh, 
voluntary travel into the borders of the United States was designed specifically was designed specifically so that there is a two-tier labor system in this uh, country with a hyper exploitable group of individuals. Everything that I just talked about, however, is not uh, is not something that is a, a national security issue. It is, and you might recognize this uh, immediately, it's an economic issue. That's it. We destroy uh, the global south. We cause political instability. We cause chaos in an effort to extract their natural resources and oftentimes their labor as well. Then in that chaos and instability, uh, people obviously are escaping that chaos and instability and they want to come into the United States of America looking for a better life, a better future for themselves and security and safety for their children. Then when they come into America, we go, oh, thank God. What a perfect opportunity. Come in, come right in. Uh, you are illegal now. And what that means is you have to work for the shittiest wages, the worst conditions possible. Yeah, we will not give you this piece of paper that says you can just do this legally, which would give you a set of protections, albeit meager protections, but protections nonetheless, so that we can even further exploit you. Then we can also use this never-ending pool of migrants coming in to work because they're in desperate conditions as a way to depress wages for the documented working class. For the documented labor force, we will say, hey, you don't have to do this stuff. We have slaves already for it, okay? Damn near slave wages. It's beautiful. We bake it into our profit margins. The entirety of the American agricultural output is reliant on undocumented labor. What? The Biden 24 campaign might genuinely burst, uh, be worse than Hillary 2016. All signs point to 18 to 35 vote deciding the election. And currently, Trump is more popular in the candidate age range, not because there are more Republicans in that age group, but because so many people in that age group fucking hate Brandon. But Brandon wants to push on with policies that are strongly abhorred by the age group genius. It's because the 18 to 35 uh, age demographic does not go out and vote. It's a minor percentage of people that go out and vote. And instead of trying to captivate them, trying to actually get them to vote for the first time, even in many instances, or vote at all, uh, well, that takes, they, takes a lot of time and effort. And it takes, uh, it takes, it changes your basic uh, uh, policy calculus too. The Brandon camp is looking at, the Brandon camp is looking at likely voters, people who have voted, people who love voting, people who come when they think about voting. You know, age demographics where people are voting by uh, much higher percentages than the 18 to 35 demographic. Those guys are reactionary. Those guys are right wing. Those guys are really worried about immigration. Now, part of the problem, part of the problem in this conversation is that there's no alternative. There's no media machine fucking pushing in the same way that like the right wing propaganda outlets regularly pump out anti-immigrant sentiment. Local news is also pretty fucking right wing shouts out to Sinclair broadcasting. It's all, it's all a monopoly now. And they're also running the whole like immigrant crime panic narrative on a regular basis for two different reasons. One, because if it bleeds, it leads and everybody knows that. And two, this kind of right-wing sentiment is great. It's great. Gets people to watch. Fear sells. So people inevitably start developing these incredibly right-wing attitudes towards immigration. But one thing that you guys need to understand is that Americans, Americans are very stupid. Many people are very stupid. Americans are also very stupid. I'm an American. I'm stupid as well, just so you understand. But the one thing that if you consistently look at Americans, the one consistent thing that all American voters will always tell you is that they are fucking inconsistent. What do I mean by this? The median voter in the United States of America simultaneously will want to deport all immigrants from this country violently, while also will tell you in the same breath that they actually think all immigrants that are here deserve amnesty. You think I'm lying? You think I must be joking? Look at the polls. You will see violent deportations become increasingly more popular in the same exact demographics, in the same exact groups, oftentimes in the same exact mind that believes in amnesty 
for 11 million undocumented migrants currently living on U.S. soil. How crazy is that? How unimaginably crazy is that? It's not crazy. It's America, baby. And therefore, I always look at a situation like this. I always look at the, the cognitive dissonance demonstrated by American voters. And I think to myself, why don't you use this to your advantage? It's obviously, you know, both of these two opinions are in people's minds. Why the fuck are you going in the easy route? Why are you, why are you going along with, with what you perceive as the easier method? which is leaning on the fucking polls. They see the polls. They see the polls. They panic and they go, oh, well, we got to do the same thing we've always done. Go more right wing. Very, very, very stupid stuff. Very stupid stuff. And when the Democratic Party does not present a strong counter to the Republican Party or even put forward legislation that the Republicans must react to, and keep their attention on, then all of a sudden the Republicans lead the conversation. And that is how you arrive at the ratchet effect. That is how you arrive at Brandon literally going in a four-year timeline, in a four-year span, Brandon goes from being like, no, no person is criminal. No one is illegal, Jack. I'm going to be doing amnesty in the first 100 days of my election. All the way to, we should kill migrants ourselves. I'm Brandon. I'm the migrant destroyer something to consider okay here it is a few months ago i shared a study from oxford showing that when liberals adopt the policies uh, or polities and narratives of the right wingers, they lose support and push their countries towards the fascists biden and many democrats in so many ways each day are walking us off the cliff something that i've been warning about for quite some time as a matter of fact you guys know this i've been talking about this literally for years it is one of the classic hasanabi stables at the staples on this fucking broadcast is if you capitulate to the right, all you've done is basically galvanize them. They are not coming at this issue from a point of real facts. They're not looking at this analytically. They're not looking at this critically. They're not looking at the facts of the matter. They are hysterical. They are crazy. They are oftentimes racist. So when you look at the racist fucking hysteria, the racist panic that they're cultivating, and you don't go, hey, that's actually racist hysteria. Fuck off with that bullshit. Here are the facts. And instead go, sorry, the racist hysteria is far too fucking popular, so we're going to have to go with that. Instead of launching a counter, you end up capitulating to the right, and you end up saying they are right. They're correct. This happens all the time. This happened with the defund the police uh, momentum. This happened with the crime panic. And it's fucking stupid. Because that is bad politics and it's bad policy. You lose seats when you do that. You lose popularity when you do that. Because people go, okay, well, you admit that immigrants are rapists too. Why the fuck would I vote for you? I'm going to vote for the guy who said immigrants are rapists for the past eight years. Do you understand? You can never outflank the right on racism. They own it. You can never outflank the right on patriotism. They own it. Patriotism in the way that Americans understand it is very different than like patriotism in the way that you might understand it, but it doesn't matter. Democrats try anyway, and they lose all the time. Look at Amy McGrath versus Kentucky's very own demon from hell. Look at what happened to her. The Republicans ran that dog shit ass campaign, and they were like, look, look at our butch lesbian who is in the Air Force. She was melting children in Afghanistan. She was melting children in the Air Force in Iraq. You have to vote for her. And that fucking dipshit Mitch McConnell still posterized their ass. Okay? When will we learn from the lessons of the past? When? Huh. John Kerry did this. They called him gay. Literally. John Kerry against George W. Bush. George W. Bush never served in the military adequately. John Kerry's a Vietnam War veteran with a purple heart. Democratic Party put him forward. You know what the Republicans said? You're gay, dog. You're fucking gay. You're a homosexual. You do windsurfing. Who does windsurfing, bro? Gay guys, okay? I'm not voting for a gay man. That's it. That, it was over. They literally went out and said, your purple heart is fake. You're gay. What'd you get it for? Sucking a dick? Literally. 
They were like, oh, dude, you were against the Vietnam War, even though you served in the Vietnam War, even though you were a part of the military in the Vietnam War and got a fucking purple heart. Wow, that's quite unpatriotic. The Vietnam War was awesome. In 2000, think about, oh, not 2000, sorry. Uh, in, in 2004, not in 2000. Think about that. In 2004, these motherfuckers were like, nah, the Vietnam War was sick. How dare you? How dare you talk shit about the Vietnam War? And the Democrats saw that and were like, you know what, guys? We should keep doing this over and over again. It'll, it will work inevitably. And it never did. Here. I'm George W. Bush, and I approve this message. In which direction would John Kerry lead? Kerry voted for the Iraq War, opposed it, supported it, and now opposes it again. He bragged about voting for the $87 billion to support our troops before he voted against it. He voted for education reform and now opposes it. He claims he's against increasing Medicare premiums, but voted five times to do so. John Kerry, whichever way the wind blows. Yeah, they were like, you're gay, dog. You windsurf. Gay guys do that. You're fucking windsurfing. Do you understand? Yeah, and he's a flip-flopper. He's really gripping that thing. Yeah. Anyway, the point is, who's more patriotic in real terms? Of course, John Kerry is. It is the most patriotic thing to, like, one, be drafted to fucking fight in an unjustifiable war, recognize how violent it is, and speak out against it, okay? That's patriotism. Learning from your mistakes. That's patriotism, right? It's also infinitely more patriotic from the American mindset, right? This is what we make movies about. And yet, they love the fucking drunk driving asshole because they don't care. Okay? They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. And you're a fucking idiot for turning around and going, yeah, you know what? Although there is no factual accuracy or real basis for the way that Republicans have created and cultivated this white nativist anti-immigrant sentiment in this country, saying that immigration is a national security problem and not an economic problem that must be solved by legalizing immigration and offering pathways to citizenship, but instead by consistently creating a fucking panicked narrative uh, built around white supremacist attitudes, even though there is no real factual basis for having these opinions. As a matter of fact, the facts show the exact opposite of what we are presenting. Maybe the Republicans are right, because sorry, they're far too popular now. This narrative is far too fucking popular. It is ridiculous. Why are they doing this? And let me tell you why they're doing it. I'm, I'll tell you why. One, because this is, uh, they have miscalculated and think that this is like far too popular of an agenda okay this is far too popular the people are like we're terrified of immigration no one is asking why people are terrified of immigration everyone's simply saying we're terrified of immigration no one is asking the question how do we like deal with this how do we educate the people okay that like their fears are born out of racist panic that they've been whipped into a frenzy by fucking fox news and all these other outlets Okay, number one, they are miscalculating and think that like a lot of people uh, think that like someone's got to do something about immigration. Oh, my God. That's what the polls show. That's what the polls show. That's what the polls show. Right. And the other reason why they're doing it is and perhaps this is even fucking stupider than the first reason they're doing this to show hypocrisy. They're doing this to be like, see, the Republicans don't care about killing migrants. I do. Bitch, you're a Democrat. The fuck do you mean? You are a fucking idiot for this. You are dumb as fuck for this. Okay? This is bad politics and bad policy. This is handing a gift. <laughs> it's great. Wonderful, wonderful triangulation, sir. Thank you for going against every single policy position that you ran on four years prior when you were objectively seen as much more favorable than you are seen now on the issue of immigration. Four years ago when Donald Trump was melting migrants, okay, when he was melting migrants, Joe Brandon, as you guys recall, ran on a pro-immigration agenda. At that point, 
the difference between who can handle the migrant crisis better was in the margins, infinitely closer for Joe Biden. And the many gains that he got from that beyond the fact that they were infinitely closer, okay, than they are now, the many gains he got that uh, got from that was obviously a shit ton of fucking support from second generation migrant children in very important states that are now blue that maybe won't be blue this time around. However, however, we of course immediately went back on that shit. His first 100 days promises were all cast aside instantaneously. And now he's trying to outflank Donald Trump on immigration. Bro, that's the build the wall guy, bro. That's the immigrants are rapist guy, bro. You can't outflank him. Because if you say, guess what, Jack? Immigrants are rapists. He's going to tomorrow turn around and be like, immigrants are actually no longer rapists. They're, the, they're even more evil than uh, being rapists. Okay, they're super rapists. They're getting shot with like rape serum before they come into the country. He will always find a way to be more racist than you. Okay? And he has already. He literally has. Brandon is over here being like, yeah, that's right. We're cutting off asylum seekers. What is Trump doing? We are going to deport 11 million migrants living in this country. We are going to deport 11 million people that have been living in this country for 10 years or even longer. Okay? That's insane. Look what you did. Man in place until the number of people trying to enter illegally is reduced to a level that our system can effectively manage. We'll carry out this order consistent with all our responsibilities under international law, every one of them. In addition to this action, we recently made important reforms in our asylum system, more efficient and more secure reforms. The goal is to deliver decisions on asylum as quickly as possible. The quicker the decision, the quicker decision means that a migrant. Bro, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Here, let me cut a fucking ad for you right now, Republican Party. Let me cut a goddamn ad for you right now. If I am a Republican operative, this is what I do. Okay? Biden in 2020 ran against our big, beautiful, bold president, Donald Trump. And he wanted to open our borders. But Biden himself said this election is about who we are and who we want to be. I believe we are a nation that welcomes those fleeing persecution and seeking asylum, not a nation that turns our back on them. So what changed? After four years of migrant rapes and migrant crimes that have killed your daughter, that have killed your sons, that have stolen your jobs, while also simultaneously, uh, simultaneously putting a strain on our welfare state that Democrats keep giving money to them instead of our homeless veterans, Biden has realized that Donald Trump was right, that immigration is a problem, but it's far too late. Don't make the mistake come November. This, this ad was paid for by uh, Super Predators for America PAC. Okay, boom, there you go. All it is, all it is, you got to fucking point to like all of his previous promises in the last campaign around and go, that's what he did. That's what he did. Look at him. That's all he did. He ruined the country. He ruined the country. He opened the fucking borders. Okay. He opened the goddamn borders. Now he wants to close it, but it's too fucking late. That's it. Why would Super Predators for America be making an ad like that? Wouldn't it be Americans against Super Predators or something? Yeah, I don't know. Fucking whatever. Yeah, Super Predators ending rapist migrants pack. Sperm. <laughs> That's it. That's all you need to do is show all of the things that Biden said four years ago and then match it and, and match it against like what Donald Trump said and be like, Donald Trump was right all along. We were too stupid to see. That's it. 
White House uses Cambridge Analytica. Biden knows what he's doing. I don't think you understand a very important detail here. Triangulating to the fucking suburbs like this because you think the suburban whites are uh, legitimately fucking terrified of like immigrant rape that's occurring, okay? Does not change the reality that it is good politics because you're not calculating all the people that you're missing. You're not calculating all the people that you're pushing away, especially in key states. That's number one. The other part of the problem is that it's also bad policy. It's just bad policy. That's it. It's not like, I don't hate the Republican Party for pushing those bills because it's the Republican Party pushing those bills. I hate the Republican Party because they fucking want to push these bills. Do you understand? A lot of Americans don't recognize this. They think it's team sports. When the Democrats do it, it's good. When the Republicans do it, it's bad. Or vice versa, if they're a Republican. It's like, no, dude. No, I care about the policy. Question, what do you think Biden should have done instead? For the past four years, Biden should have actually tried to fucking tackle this in the positive direction. Offer federal funds to Texas. Showcase that Governor Greg Abbott refuses to take federal funds that will help beef up the processing aspect of immigrants instead of, uh, and, and, and then prosecute Greg Abbott for when, uh, for when he fucking literally kidnapped and trafficked thousands, almost 100,000 migrants at the border and shipped them off to New York and Chicago. That's what I would do. I would literally throw Greg Abbott and Ron DeSantis in fucking jail, okay? That's what I would do. I would prosecute them. I would, I would destroy them. I would tie them up in fucking federal court permanently for doing openly illegal shit. Are you kidding me? Are you joking? Anyone that played a role in this fucking scheme that was specifically designed to disrupt the normal processes for, uh, for, for migrant process or the normal legal uh, system that currently exists for these asylum seekers, which is valid and legal, which 99% attend their fucking court dates, by the way. Anyone that tries to disrupt that is disrupting America's duty, America's moral duty, America's duty as a, as a fucking nation state that abides by international humanitarian law. You're fucking ridiculous. On top of that, you're literally shipping migrants as a political ploy. You're misguiding them. So yeah, I would 100% prosecute you, throw your fucking bitch ass in jail, okay? That's what I would do. And then after that, I'd go, hey, listen, we need a new governor that is going to cooperate with the rule of the fucking law. What do you do in that situation? You, you then say, look, we're going to give you guys extra federal funds to make sure that in this time of need, when there's more migrants that coming in than ever before, we will swiftly fucking put them through the legal system and allow them to go and work with uh, as, as documented laborers in the labor force. What is this? My mom keeps saying Biden's choices are reasonable because can we actually handle that number of people? Can you tell me what argument against is? Yes. Yes. There is no number of like migrants that America can't fucking handle. Okay. That's insane. We are the way we are the wealthiest nation on the fucking planet. We are the wealthiest nation in history. We are so large. Ask your mom to just look at a Google map of uh, Wyoming, okay? Just literally look at America. The entire planet, if it had the same density as New York City, could fit into the state of Texas, okay? What the fuck are we talking about? Obviously, we're not going to do that, but like, think. Think about that. The other thing that people don't understand, the other thing that people don't fucking understand, which is really, really frustrating, is that we need these people. We need them. And I'm not even saying that in like an annoying, out of touch, lib ass way where it's like, oh, who's going to do the fucking shitty jobs for no pay? We need these people because otherwise, America would also be just as fucking old and running into the same goddamn issues as like a country like Japan is, for example. Okay? Every country that suspiciously has incredibly reactionary attitudes towards uh, migrants coming in suspiciously have an incredibly aging population. How does that happen? Without younger people coming in, without younger people coming in and having children, 
this country would not have the next fucking labor force. Not that we need it anyway. We're just constantly, uh, <laughs> we're just constantly fucking utilizing uh, third world labor at this point. But still, yeah, the United States is about the same size as China, but one fifth of the population. We could settle a billion people here, in my opinion, and be fine. We wouldn't be fine. The reason why we wouldn't be fucking fine is because we don't have the same long term interest in like solving problems. That's the issue. But I advocate that we do. Are we not? Do we well, want? Do you, you really you, want you borders? Tell me. I mean, once upon a time, there were no passports. <laughs> the world was much a much better place. When Lord Byron went to Greece, where he died, or Lord Elgin, for that matter, <laughs> he didn't need a passport. What was wrong with that? I think borders are a sign of failure of the human species. It's very relevant right now because the UK is currently having a, a, a lot of debate about immigration. You shouldn't be having this debate. It is a misanthropic, stupid debate, and you have a min. How do you best tackle gang violence? We didn't just implement visitation zones and already Muslims have gotten beaten by the police. Bro. Oh my God. Any kind of violent crime is born out of fucking socioeconomic conditions. The real issue with countries like Sweden and Germany and many other places that they fucking develop enclaves and they ghettoize the population that they are trying to keep subservient and poor instead of integrating them into society. So then... It's much easier to hit the fucking reactionary uh, talking points. It's much easier to just say, you know why everything sucks? It's not capitalism. It's not because of austerity. Oh, don't say that. It's not neoliberalization of our entire economy, even though we were supposed to be this beacon of social democracy in Sweden. We were the regime. We defended it. We defended the democratic socialist principles here. Uh, and now that's all gone. Now that's going away, neoliberalism is thriving in this country, and that's precisely the reason why you're feeling the hurt. But actually, that's not the reason why you're feeling the hurt. You know why you're feeling the hurt? Muslims. That's right. They're doing rapes. They're doing rape gangs. And they're doing kebab on a pizza? What the fuck is that about? Think about that, Swedish people. It must be them. It is a super easy way to craft narratives Immigrants and other forms of marginalized populations can always be presented as the villains of society when they are some of the weakest. And because they're some of the weakest collectively, all of a sudden, they have no mechanism for defense. Okay? They have no, they have no defense. They have no response. You never hear from them, so you can just fucking lie about them all day, every day. You can point to... Uh, you can point to singular acts of violence and say, this entire group of people is responsible. They all like this shit. They all love this shit. They, wanna, they didn't want to come to Sweden because they wanted a better life for themselves. They wanted to come to Sweden because they wanted to rape. They wanted to do Swedish rape. That's why they're here. Well, that's a bad example. It's pretty much everybody loves kebab pizza. I know, I know, I know. What? You are way too good at replicating child talking points, brother. What does that mean? Like talking points that children can understand? Is that what you're saying? Because that's my job. So thank you if that's what you're saying. Here it is. Democrats talk about migrants under Trump. Democrats talk about migrants under Biden. You are way too good at replicating Chud talking. Oh, Chud talking points. Why do black people commit more crimes than white people? Is it due to their surroundings? Black people commit more crimes than white people. The fuck? What are we doing? Are we doing 1350 in the chat right now? Crime across the board is born out of people's material conditions. Okay? That's it. It has been that way since ancient Greece. Okay? People have, it's something that people have recognized for quite a long time. It has nothing to do with the skin color of a person, it has nothing to do with like how uh, undeveloped or uncivilized they might be. There are a multitude of different reasons as to why the 1350 statistic is bullshit. One, 1350 actually simply is talking about arrest records. It's not actually talking about criminal convictions. The white supremacist criminal justice system obviously treats black people relatively unfairly. For example, things such as uh, marijuana possession, like things that you would take for granted. Black people, uh, although they consume drugs at the same rate as white people, if, if not uh, at a lesser rate than white people, get far longer sentences for the same exact crimes. Okay, we have the crack versus cocaine distinction, for example. Crack versus cocaine uh, sentencing disparity is one of the glaringly obvious ways in which we try to punish black people more than we try to punish white people. 
Okay? So that's one. Number two, it is not a cultural issue at all. Rap music or other forms of black culture are some of the most commodified aspects of American culture. American whites don't often create culture if we're being fucking real, okay? Um, this, uh, you know, There are more white people that are listening to rap music than there are black people. There are more white people than there are black people in general. This doesn't mean that like they're not being uh, impacted by rap music and rap culture in the same way that black people are. So what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that black people have like some different brain, for example, that like causes them to listen to rap music and then be more violent? No, it's fucking bullshit. It's because black people have been systematically undermined in this goddamn country. Okay. They are over prosecuted, over criminalized, constantly fucking, uh, constantly being, uh, constantly being victimized by the criminal justice system and of course at the end of that there is a there is a, their communities are being underserved and there is a major disparity because we never actually recognize the wrongs that we committed towards black people in this goddamn nation many people don't even understand it many people don't even want to recognize it they don't even want to talk about systemic racism they think it's fucking bullshit oh anyway the real problems are that black people are consistently and historically and in contemporary society still underserved and undermined by the white supremacist criminal justice system. This is system. This is systemic racism. And people oftentimes will turn around and talk about 1350, which is an incredibly racist fucking attitude that they have that they think is a good gotcha. When in fact, it's just a revelation that they personally don't really understand it and are fearful and uh, they're just going to be, you know, very racist. People don't get how much of a wasteland the country is between Mississippi and the Rockies. Literally towns that once had thousands of people living there now have less than 100. Yeah. Yeah. Like knowing better said, the standard American history myth does not explain the state of black poverty in America. So people create conclusions. What is the 1350 uh, talking point? Uh, a while ago, the FBI released their age, I mean, they released their uh, race profile for their arrest numbers, okay, across the board. It showed that 13% of the population, which is the black population, was responsible for 50% of the crimes, is what 4chan went along with. Except the problem is, it wasn't actually 50% of the crimes that they were committing, it was simply arrest numbers. Okay, of course, black people are arrested on a fucking higher frequency. We know that already. Black people are over criminalized. Black people are uh, prosecuted at a at a higher rate. For the same level of fucking uh, for the for the despite the fact that they are, you know, doing the same exact quote unquote crimes that white people are doing. Anyway, what is the evidence for what you are saying? The evidence for what am I saying? That black people are, are over-policed, black communities are underserved financially and over-policed and also arrested at a higher rate for the same level of, of criminal actions that white people engage with on a regular basis? Is that what you're asking? No, don't say look at reality, just Google it. I will give you a couple keywords to type in to Google, okay? Are you ready? Black, white, sentencing disparity. Yeah. People never read the end of the 1350 study, which literally concluded there was systemic racism. The same study, the same study showed black Americans are 20% more likely to face charges than a white person for the same crimes. It also showed disproportionate sentencing, up to 60% harsher for POC. This data is from the same FBI study that races love to spout. <clears throat> How do you counter debate someone who brings up, though? Right-wing points that you're talking about? What do you mean? I'm currently doing that right now. Look, I try to simplify this to the best of my ability. Okay? I try to simplify this to the best of my ability. There are either... There's only two ways out of this conversation. Either you believe that system, systemic racism exists and black people are systematically undermined, and that is the reason for why there's so much wealth disparity, or you believe that Black people are either culturally, which is usually a dog whistle and a substitute for what I'm about to say, racially inferior. And that is the reason why they are, uh, you know, not as rich as white people. Okay? It's one or the other. Either systemic racism exists or there's some intrinsic factors. Some intrinsic factors that are uh, responsible for the, the 
lack of development in the black community in comparison to the white community. I am a believer, a firm believer in understanding history and recognizing that it is definitely external factors. There is no secret third thing, by the way. That's it. It's either one or the other. If you believe that there is some kind of inferiority, then you're a racist. It's that simple. You literally personally falsely believe that black people are inferior to white people. That's it. You can try to masquerade it under the uh, auspices of culture. You could be like, oh, it's just the culture. But that is pretty easy to just undermine when you ask someone, what do you mean culture? What do you mean culture? Everybody consumes black culture. Do you think white guys in the Appalachian mountains that listen to fucking only rock and roll music aren't just as, uh, ju you know, just as addicted to drugs as the black people that you're talking about? Maybe it has something to do with the material conditions. Are white people not fucking listening to rap music? Are black people only, there is, is it like a, a different frequency? There has to be some kind of genetic inferiority in that situation. Unless you think... Like, it doesn't make any sense if you if you don't believe that there is, like, a way that, uh, I guess, like, a frequency that black people are tuning into when they listen to rap music that makes them more violent, I guess, than, than white people, even though more white people listen to rap music than black people do. So what is it? Do you agree that other POCs like Latinos, AAPI, also face systemic racism similar to black community? Different forms of it, not the same. There are two groups of people in this country that have been systematically undermined in a way unlike any other indigenous populations for genocide and the black population for uh the black population for chattel slavery there is just no comparison to it slavery in and of itself is unique when it comes to chattel slavery historians literally fucking signified it as a specific thing because all matter of slavery whether it be the ottomans that we were talking about before a while ago when people were getting mad at me and they're like oh white people slavery all matter of slavery, whether it be Irish indentured, serv uh, indentured servants or, or Chinese slavery, uh, any matter of slavery across the board historically was very different than chattel slavery. Chattel slavery was conducted on the virtue of the color of your skin, conducted on the fact that you were considered chattel. You were not a human being. You were dehumanized. And therefore, you could do anything and everything you wanted to this uh, person that was not a person at all. All matter of other forms of slavery historically gave you an out. Basically, it was not intergenerational in many instances. You could fucking buy your way out of it. This didn't make it just, by the way. This didn't make it good, okay? But there is a reason for why chattel slavery was seen as, as something unimaginable. The cruelty of it all. The, the, the historic significance of it. Okay? Okay? It is a uniquely evil type of, of slavery in comparison to other forms of slavery. Can you imagine that? Huh. And it's really interesting when you think about it because initially, initially, it wasn't even a thing. Like people weren't even thinking about it as like a race thing. Okay. It was done on the virtue of Christianity. It was done on the virtue of religion. You know what I mean? They were like, oh, these are not Christians. The church wasn't in, uh, in favor of, like, you know, enslaving other Christians. And as long as these people did not fucking convert to Christianity, they could be slaves. So they had to find something different. Eventually, they had to find a different reason as to why you could enslave people. You always had to sell it. And basically... Once we arrived at um, Reformation uh, and, and America was uh, already like relatively, uh, America was Calvinist. And then beyond that, we had our own, you know, we had the Industrial Revolution. But beyond that, we had our own unique uh, form of scientific reasoning for racism. We arrived at phrenology. We tried to find not a Christian reason to maintain racism and maintain slavery, uh, chattel slavery specifically we looked for scientific reasons scientific reasons that we currently fucking understand were completely faulty which is made up okay black people have a different skull and that's why they're more servile they want to be servile it's bullshit we still have these outdated antiquated completely false 
mechanisms of justifying white supremacy that exists in society to this day. It's called the bell curve, IQ. We just move on to the next thing over and over again, <sighs> except for skull phrenology, which is real. It's the most real skull science. It's the only real skull science. Minister who should have been expelled from this country. Now we're attacking the bell curve. Do you know what, the, what I'm talking about when I say the bell curve? I'm talking about the book, dog. Okay. Okay. I think you meant cop phrenology, my man. Wait, what did I say? Yeah, cop phrenology. Nah, we all know you hate math and the normal distribution. Yes, that's what I was. I was tackling math. Anyway, I didn't say cop phrenology. Sorry, you're right. The only phrenology that is real is cop skull. That's it. All right. Anyway, uh, I don't. I can't believe I moved on to this level of like. Uh, you know, we were talking about all this like, you know, white supremacy, all these uh, different things. When in fact, I should be, uh, you know, keeping my eye on the ball here. We're going to be talking about immigration. Let's get back to it. Um, here's Giannis uh, ripping into, I mean, talking about the e, the UK and his attitudes on immigration. Because the UK is currently having a, a, a lot of debate about immigration. You shouldn't be having this debate. It is a misanthropic, stupid debate. And you have a minister who should have been expelled from this country for having these ideas. She, I mean, she even challenged the U United Nations Charter on Refugees. I mean, this is, this is, this is... A, she suggested it might have been an outdated, idiot. an outdated legal mechanism to she resolve that problem. She's a dangerous, problem. poor excuse of human nature. But That's the people, a who's, of yours. the people who are anxious... very ashamed of her. <laughs> He's like, wow, Giannis... Typical wants an Indian woman to be deported. Wow. Wants an Indian woman to be deported, folks. You see that? You see that? Classic. Okay. Classic. She's Sri Lanka. My bad. But the people who are anxious about this issue. Should have said brown woman. You are so much for the tolerant left. Trying to look after. Sure. There are people who... My job is not, no, no, is not to pander to anxieties that are absolutely false consciousness examples. Look, Freddie, we Europeans exported hordes, hordes of people. We emigrated to the four <coughs> cor corners of the universe, of the universe, of the planet. Huh? We populated the Earth from Latin America to North America to Asia to Africa. Millions usually armed as well, right, <laughs> as imperialists. We had no qualms about that for a thousand years. All that has happened is that we're getting old. Demographically, we are aging. So, you know, migratory flows have reversed. We need migrants. The more, the merrier. Why do people worry about the Romanians living next door to them? It's because the flats have been privatized. They used to be council houses, and now they are being privatized and austerity, together with largesse for the finances through quantitative easing, has destroyed the foundation of the society, even if you didn't have a single foreigner. All this angst and rage is yes. being diverted, as in the mid-war period, against the Jew, the Muslim, the Romanian, the Brit, the German, the foreigner. We must not tolerate that, and we must never pander to that and say, oh, the solution... If you had all of your needs met, if you had all of your fucking needs met, if you had a house, if you had shelter, if you had all of these different things, if you had a, a, a prospect for a better future, a capacity to dream, okay, uh, and, and a committed government, you would never fucking worry yourself with this shit. You'd just be like, great, I'm happy, okay, I'm happy, I don't give a fuck, yeah, they can have it too. That's it. And the irony is, this is all we talk about in, in movies and in cinema and in books. We literally will point to those people who are good people, kind people, honest people. Okay? But in the real world, for some weird reason, these fucking villainous attitudes and these villainous, uh, the, the villainous mindset of just like, no, fuck those other people. Oh, we should do everything we can to just kill them. Fuck those people. Uh, it's it just that has so much more staying power. Then why are the most aggro people on immigration business owners? First of all, they are not the most aggro people. on. There are plenty of fucking aggro people across the board. But it's not like business owners themselves. I'm not saying you cannot have 
racist ass attitudes across the board. If you're I'm not saying that rich people are not racist, you can still have racism. We're talking about trying to undermine uh, trend lines here. Okay. We're trying to reverse the trend of having normal people fucking experience racist thoughts. Why do they get it? They get it because there's a lot of volatility. They get it because there's a lot of instability. There's a lot of anger. Okay. And uh, there is a Republican party that straight up channels all of that frustration and channels all that anger and directs it to marginalized communities. Now, having said that though, when we're talking about business owners, plenty of business owners fucking hate migrants, but what do they love? What do they love? Well, in the interest of their class position and their advocacy for, on that regard, they love undocumented labor. They love cheap labor. Okay. They love labor exploitation. Maybe some of them are personally completely oblivious to the reality that, uh, that like their advocacy about criminalizing, uh, migration is, you know, offering them a lot more cheap labor. Maybe they just got duped because they were angry about some other shit. They were angry about the uncertainty. Yeah, there would always still be racist people. I'm not saying that you would combat racism and you would eradicate it in its entirety. I never said that. It would just make it harder for people to become racist because in the instability, the economic instability that people face creates a perfect ground for a fascist takeover. Angry people are easy to, to move in a certain direction. It's also about locals not seeing foreigners as the same as them, so they don't want to overtake them in the capital's rat race. It's just under communism. It wouldn't matter. They can be as racist as they want as long as I get what I need. Fuck them. That was my realization when I wasn't so focused on my individual bills I had to pay because I got into a better financial situation due to luck. I started to pay more attention to society around me and ask, why are those other people suffering so much when I have my needs met? Do they not? Do they now have their material needs like rent and food met? Yeah. Will this, how you, uh, will this affect how you vote in November? Bitch, I don't care about fucking voting in November at all. You are so far removed from the conversation if that's what you're talking about right now. If that's the only thing you care about, you should be smiling and dialing, baby. You shouldn't be in here at all. Calling up people individually and apologizing to them for Brandon's fucking idiotic uh, actions. Is less likely to pay a criminal smuggler thousands Graham of dollars Waters, thank to you take for the them on a dangerous subs. journey. Knowing that if in fact they move in the wrong direction, they returned around quickly. And two weeks ago, the Department of Justice stated, started a new docket in the immigration courts to address cases where people have recently crossed the border and make, can they make a decision within six months rather than six years, because that's what happens now. Additionally, the Department of Homeland Security has proposed new rules to- Hey, liberal, my vote matters so much more than yours because I'm in Pennsylvania, bitch. Okay. Are you talking to me or the other guy? It doesn't matter where you are in the country, okay? Allow federal law enforcement to more quickly remove asylum seekers that have criminal convictions and remove them from the United States. My administration has also recently launched new efforts to go after criminal networks that profit from smuggling migrants to our border and incentivize what? people. To from the 2023 USSC demographic report for sentences longer than 60 months, black males receive lengths of incarceration approximately 1% shorter than white males. Doesn't this say the opposite of your argument? For short sentences, the difference is around 8% towards blacks. Women get 30% shorter sentences than men, but no one complains about that. I love that, like, one book, I think, is all you need to read on this matter to recognize how fucking stupid you are, okay? I can't believe I'm about to say this, but, like, this is literally reverse Angela Davis arguments happening in here. Like, the sentencing disparity between black people and white people is not so that we literally fucking sentence white people more, dumbass. It's to show the disparity. Just like the sentencing disparity between women and men doesn't mean we should punish women more. Please tell me you are trying to debate me at the top of the hour with a three-minute ad break. Please. Okay? But the fact that you're saying blacks implies that perhaps, you know, maybe you're not doing that, especially because you fucking cherry pick data. 
You cherry picked data. No, they're a serious two hour follower. Yeah, exactly. To desperately fucking undermine, to desperately undermine uh, the, the, like, uh, to desperately undermine that the idea of system, systemic racism and sentencing disparity does not exist, actually. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. You're right. White people are actually... White people are actually getting, um, getting longer sentences than black people in this country. It's just weird that, like, when you look at the numbers within the black community, one out of every black child has at least one incarcerated parent and when you look at the white community in this country, that number goes up to like more than I think for the Latino country, uh, for the Latino demographics. Okay. For the Latino demographics, that goes up to like 20, one out of 20. And for white, I think it's like one out of 40. I'm fucking up the, uh, I'm most likely fucking up the, um, the, the, the actual percentages here. 2023 demographic differences in federal sentencing. The commission has studied the issue of demographic differences in sentencing throughout its history in four prior reports studying various time periods. The commission has examined based on the continued interest in this issue. Key findings, specifically black males receive sentences 13.4% longer and Hispanic males receive sentences 11.2% longer than white males. The sentencing differences in the data commission examined largely. How did you arrive at this fact? I want to know, no, I want to know where this guy got, I want to know who told him to like come in here and, and cherry pick one aspect of the data. Just one aspect of the fucking data. Like, how do you do that? Also, you should be spending your time wisely working. Now that there's a twitchflation at the top of the hour when there's a three minute ad break, you need $6, not five. To avoid seeing those ads at the top of the fucking hour. <clears throat> it also doesn't even say uh, blacks. It says black males, but regardless. Um, baby matcha latte. Thank you for the 10 community. Give the subs allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. <laughs> black males were 23.4% less likely and Hispanic males were 26.6% less likely to receive a probationary sentence compared to white males. Similar trends were observed among females. Black and Hispanic females were less likely to receive probation sentences than white females, 11% less likely and 29% less likely, respectively. The sentencing differences were less pronounced when uh, the analysis focused solely in cases in which the sentence of imprisonment was imposed, which comprised 94% of all cases during the five-year study period. Focusing solely on these cases, black males received lengths of incarceration 4.7% longer and Hispanic males received incarceration 1.9% longer than white males. There was little difference among females receiving a sentence uh, of imprisonment. Differences in the length of imprisonment across demographic uh, groups were concentrated among individuals who received relatively short sentences. So you saw the key findings of this report and you went into the full report so you could find one aspect of this fucking full report. Okay. One aspect of this full report. I suspect. And cherry pick this data that goes against the, the broader, the broader findings of the report in general, while simultaneously making it seem like women should get worse sentences in general. When I talk about the sentencing disparity between black and white people, I'm not making an argument to fucking jail white people longer, dumbass. Oy, oy, oy. Try not to be a disingenuous racist gray name. Scroll down. No, I got it. I know. You're, we're going to find your, your, one, your one talking point, but I don't understand what you have to say for the key findings of the same report that you suggested. What do you have to say to all of the key findings? The 60 months that he mentioned was at the bottom of the key findings page. Oh. When examining all sentences opposed, females received sentences 29.2% shorter than males. Females of all races were 39.6% more likely to receive a probation sentence. When examining only sentences of incarceration, females received lengths of incarceration 11.3% shorter than males. Oh, here. Among differences in length of imprisonment across demographic groups were concentrated among individuals who receive relatively short sentences. Among individuals sentenced to 18 months or less incarceration, black males received lengths of incarceration 6.8% longer than white males. 
The difference narrowed down to 1.3% for individuals who receive sentences of greater than 18 months to 60 months. But for sentences longer than 60 months, black males receive lengths of incarceration approximately 1% shorter than white males. Few differences were statistically significant when comparing, sen uh, when comparing sentences to females. I like that your ultra cherry picking still shows that the sentencing disparity literally is like inconsequential when it in your mind favors black people and also at no point does it say blacks in this fucking government report <laughs> so i don't even know it's a double standard oh my god brother white men and black men should be held to the same standard i agree Brother, I don't think you are convincing a single person that you are not the dumbest white supremacist we've ever encountered on this broadcast in quite a long time. Okay? Like, you got caught. We looked at the data that you presented. The data overwhelmingly goes against the argument that you're trying to fucking present. Now that you got caught in this circumstance, saying something that's, like, laughable, you are now turning around and going, Oh, I just care about the hypocrisy, actually. I just care about the hypocrisy of it all. No, you don't, dumb fuck. If you did, you wouldn't be trying to undermine the point that I was making. That also is represented in the key findings of this fucking report. Broadly. Across the board. Instead, you looked at the key findings and tried to find a singular aspect of it that you could fucking cherry pick and chirp about it. The goal should be for more lenient sentencing and a focus on rehabilitation rather than incarceration, jackass. Not the other way around. You're talking about women getting fucking lower sentences in, in general because you're an incel freak on top of being a fucking white supremacist. Suck my dick. Fuck you, Hassan. Okay, fuck me, dude. That's awesome. There is so much data readily available so much empirical evidence to suggest that the American criminal justice system is unimaginably cruel for everyone, but especially so for black people and brown people. And this motherfucker was like, oh, I got him. I got him. I don't know what this guy's gripe is. The lack of intelligence in their response to you is so wild. It's just, it's, it's very, very, very fucking sick. It's back. We're 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 back. Oh, how does this happen every single time I have a dumbass chatter that I'm fucking yelling at? I don't even understand it. Also, the study defining a standard incarceration period of 18 to 60 months, then saying within that specific time frame, there's only a 1%, less than 1% difference. Is a wild thing to hyper focus on. Yeah, I know. Um, it is a wild thing to hyper-focus on unless you're just a fucking super racist person. And in which case you're like desperately looking for any kind of sentencing disparity that favors your opinion that like white people are actually being undermined. Don't look at the overwhelming amount of evidence, even from the key findings of the study that I'm presenting to you that shows that the sentencing disparity conversation actually favors what you're saying, that there is a white supremacy problem in the criminal justice system. Just focus on this one instance. And it's such an easy fucking, such an easy, classic, uh, quick way to, to try and fail to, to undermine the argument. Anyway, let's continue with this shit. You have tips to law enforcement to provide information that brings smugglers to justice. We're also sending additional federal prosecutors to hotspots along the border and prosecute individuals who break our immigration laws. One other critical step that we will be, will be taking, and that is made a huge difference. We continue to work closely with our Mexican neighbors instead of attacking Mexico. And it's worked. We built a strong partnership of trust between the Mexican President Lopez Obrador, and I'm going to do the same with the Mexican-elect President who I spoke with yesterday. We've chosen to work together with Mexico as an equal partner, and the facts are clear. Due to the arrangements that I've reached with President Obrador, the number of migrants coming and shared uh, to our shared border unlawfully in recent months has dropped dramatically. But while these steps are important, they're not enough 
truly secure the border, we have to change our laws. And Congress needs to provide the necessary funding to hire 1,500 more border security agents, 100 more immigration judges to help tackle the backlog of cases, more than 2 million of them, 4,300 more asylum officers to make decisions in less than six months instead of six years, which is what it takes now, and around 100 more high-tech detection machines to significantly increase the ability to screen and stop fentanyl being smuggled into the United States. These investments were one of the primary reasons that the Border Patrol Union endorsed the bipartisan deal in the first place. And these investments are essential, remain essential. As far as I'm concerned, if you're not willing to spend the money to hire more Border Patrol agents, more asylum officers, more judges, more high-tech machinery, you're just not serious about protecting our border. It's as simple as that. I believe that immigration has always been a lifeblood of America. We're constantly renewed by an infusion of people with, and new talent. The Statue of Liberty is not some relic of American history. It stands for who we are as the United States. So I will never demonize immigrants. I'll never refer to immigrants as poisoning the blood of a country. And further, I'll never separate children from their families at the border. I will not ban people from this country because of their religious beliefs. I will not use the U.S. military to go into neighborhoods all across the country to pull millions of people out of their homes and away from their families to put detention camps and away, while awaiting deportation, as my predecessor says he will do if he to occupies his office again. This is also such a funny way to be like, listen, I'm doing literally everything that he said he wanted to do that I ran against, but also simultaneously... <laughs> but also simultaneously, I'm doing it in a woke way. It's like, who believes this? Like, who, who are you tailoring this message for? It's so good. It's great. My very, very first day as president, I introduced a comprehensive immigration reform plan to fix, to fix our broken system, secure our border, provide a pathway for citizenship for dreamers, and a lot more. And I'm still fighting to get that done. But we must face the simple truth. To protect America as a land that was to stop this zombie fuck from lying and doing all this shit since he's already a proven liar? Wait, what do you mean? Democrats never lie when it comes to reactionary policy. They are with it, okay? They're on board. They only lie when they're talking about, like, you know, uh, helping you. They only lie when they're talking about, like, uh, you know, protecting uh, uh, civil liberties or... Uh, pushing legislation that will protect civil liberties or, uh, you know, restoring some kind of parity in voting in black communities, you know, things that would help them in the long run win elections. Even then, they're like, eh, not going to do that, actually. Welcomes comes immigrants. We must first secure the border and secure it now. The simple truth is there is a worldwide migrant crisis. And if the United States doesn't secure our border, there's no limit to the number of people may try to come here because there's no... Why is that a problem? What, what, what are you talking about? Why? You're a Democrat. You're supposed to say we're a nation of immigrants and these Republicans are racist as fuck and that the real problem is actually not legalizing and creating processes so that people can safely come here. Okay? That's it. What happened? Why are you not saying those words? It's additionally ridiculous to say this as the Democratic president at a time when, like, there's so much anti-immigrant sentiment. But of course, here, yeah, this is the fucking dumbasses. Biden's wins. Posting this as, like, a fucking major W. Two cents before he said immigration is the blood of the nation. Yeah, except it goes against that, doesn't it? His executive order kind of undermines that. No better place on the planet than the United States of America. For those who say the steps I've taken are too strict, I say to you that be patient. And goodwill of the American people are going to be wearing thin right now. Doing nothing is not an option. We have to act. We must act consistent with both our law and our values, our values as Americans. I'll take these steps today not to walk away from we, who we are as Americans, but to make sure we preserve who we are for future generations to come. Today, I've spoken about what we need to do to secure the border. Uh, Breaking President Biden just slammed Republicans for failing to take action on the border. 
President Biden enacts Trump policy. He ran against only four years ago white nativists. It's hilarious. He thinks this one action will change the narrative, even if it's exactly what the right wing wants. It won't be enough since it's from the Democrats. Yes, all you do, all you do in this situation is not win over fucking voters to your party to show them that, like, you do actually legitimately care about this issue or whatever. All you do, I'm confused. The chat wants to let in illegal immigrants overrun our country. Where's the logic? We can barely support Americans, lol. Oh. Dude, it, it isn't anti-immigration to secure borders, you weirdo. Yeah, dude. Asylum seekers. Stopping asylum seekers from seeking asylum. Okay? Like... Through executive or uh, through the is through an executive order, it is insane. The thing is, I don't know where you were four, five, six years ago, but I'm fairly certain that you were, if you are actually a Democrat, chirping at Donald Trump because he was doing it. That's the problem with pure team sports. You adopted it so quickly in a way. You are no different than the Republicans who like hated Russia because of communism or whatever, because they're Soviet Russia, their entire lives, because they were geared to hate Russia their entire lives, who now love Vladimir Putin because they're in a telegram group that says Vladimir Putin wants to kill fucking trans people. Like you changed your mind even faster than the motherfucking Republicans did. There is no shot. My family came here illegally, and now I'm getting two advanced degrees, and my brother's a lawyer. America's just can't grind, in, uh, grind hard enough. Yeah. What the hell is going on, man? Wait, what? What happened to this user? Why can't I fucking see what this dude was saying? Oh, it's the wrong username. Following this is March 15, 2023. Oh, a classic. <laughs> classic fucking bait account. Probably the original account got banned, set up a new account, and then immediately started following. Yeah. 2020, protect asylum. No kids in cages. 2024, protect asylum. No kids in cages. America would collapse if you kicked out all the asylum seekers or immigrants that you, uh, that you have such a problem with. Yeah. I mean, it's just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Shut down asylum and deport everyone. Shut down asylum and deport everyone. But gay. It's great, man. You are 100% right. I've already seen like five Congress people either saying it's too little too late or Biden's plan will still allow one million immigrants to enter the country. It will never be enough for them and they'll always have an excuse. Biden will never get politicians or Republican voters on his side with this shit. Yeah, it's not about that. It's about showing the voters that like Republicans don't actually care about immigration uh, and they, they're not uh, really interested about uh, immigration. They just want to use it as a talking point. Now, the issue there, however, is that now you're caring about immigration from the Republican perspective. Like, the argument you're literally presenting here is, hey, guess what? Republicans actually don't want to fucking kill immigrants. We do. Wait a minute. What? You want to kill immigrants? What the fuck's going on? Since when do you want to kill immigrants? I thought you were the not killing immigrants party. What do you mean you want to killed what the fuck one thing biden is doing that trump did not do in his asylum ban um the administration is making it harder for asylum seekers from having a chance to enter the u.s and get lesser forms of protection in court after being denied asylum it means it will be easier for the government to deport migrants from custody than it is now this new standard for the lesser protection is being termed reasonable probability DHS says it is a new, uh, substantially higher standard than the current standard. According to the Department of Homeland Security. Oh. America is a settler colonial project, not a country of immigrants. White Europeans will always be welcome. Yeah, that's ridiculous, dog. This ain't like 1864, okay? The fuck do you mean? The only reason why you think that still is because we've comfortably decided that people that we didn't consider to be white are now under the white umbrella, including Hispanics, for the record. So, 
That's the only reason. That's literally it. America is a settler colonial project. You're right about that. And these are white nativist immigration policies. You're right about that front as well. But you're wrong on the front that this is not a nation of immigrants. It certainly is now. I don't think the chatter was endorsing the settler colonial. No, he's... I, I'm just using what he said and uh, addressing the correct things that he said. Hassan is a sad... What? Hassan probably likes to sniff farts. Hassan, a sad soy boy, Trump 2024. Bro, probably not 269, brother. What? I'm a sad soy boy? Bro, look at me. What the fuck are you saying? Do you lift? Yes, brother, I do. I lift my dick into your mother and father's ass every night. What MM is your Hermes chain? What are you talking about? What Hermes chain? Barring asylum seekers from entering is not a solution. The last time U.S. stopped migrants was a Title 42, which was an utter failure and extremely harmful to migrants. Yes. Chill, I'm at work, bro. Sorry. On the day of this border announcement, also worth noting the Biden admin also continues to fight families separated by Trump in court over restitution and has held exactly zero people accountable for the policy Biden himself called criminal, by the way. Shouts out to Jacob Soboroff of NBC News. He does really good work on reporting specifically on the... The, the immigration stuff. From the earliest days of the Biden admin, we have seen signs policy uh, was heading in the direction of today's announcement. March 2021, we watched as Haitian asylum seekers were turned away in Tijuana with the... Can you react to Mrs. Gaming Expo? No, dude. I'm a fucking political commentator. Take a goddamn week off. Are you guys fucking stupid? What is happening in this chat right now? We are literally falling apart as a goddamn community. What the fuck? Like, that's crazy. Much love to the OTK boys, but I'm going to fucking cover the actual news, okay? It, especially in this goddamn uh, time slot. What are we talking about? I heard a lot of different things about what's going on on the Mexican side of the U.S. border, and it is definitely confusing. I'm with Gerlin, and I'm with Lindsay, and we're going to go see for ourselves. Once we entered Tijuana from San Diego, attorney Lindsay Tzlowski and activist Gerlene Joseph led us around the corner to a Mexican um, port of entry called El Chaparral. This is pretty intense. Yeah, people are in extremely desperate situations. They've come here hoping that, you know, we'll be able to tell them how they can actually vindicate their right to asylum. In most cases, unfortunately, our answer is really that there are no options at the moment. What you're looking at right there is a table, uh, uh, basically a kiosk set up by a consortium of immigration activists, people trying to get information about how, if at all, the policies under the Biden administration are different than under the Trump administration. Refugees from all over the world have made their way to this square. Many of the Haitians are survivors of the 2010 earthquake that killed hundreds of thousands and don't have a legal pathway to asylum in the United States. What's happening here? What's happening here is that we have a lot of those migrants, uh, uh, Haitian and also folks from African countries, they simply come here to ask for, for guidance, to ask for information. Uh, they are all confused. What's interesting to me is when you hear the Biden administration saying we're going to have a fair and a safe and a humane system, and it's going to be a departure from Trump, most of, the, if not all of these people, have been and will be under the same system that they were under Trump, under Biden. Under the same system. At the other end of the information kiosk, attorney Erika Pinero was handing out information flyers to migrants from other countries. I heard today at the White House that Homeland Security Secretary say, what we're doing, the way we're processing, you know, this is a big departure from the Trump administration. Is it fair to say that it's a big departure yet? Not much has changed since Trump. They've only processed a handful of people each day. Beyond those already on the border, the World Food Program reports that drought and famine compounded by economic collapse due to COVID are worse than ever in Central America. And because of that, the NGO says nearly twice as many people they surveyed are planning to migrate compared to 2018. And how about just recent arrivals? They keep saying, don't come, don't come to the border, stay home. Are there people that you've met who have just arrived here, have been left Central America or wherever? The vast majority of people have been in Tijuana for at least a year, sometimes two. Um, I've met, I would say, less than 10% of the people are recent arrivals. How long have you been waiting to get into the United States? I don't know. She, she's been here for two years. Two years. One year, one year. A year, a year. The majority of them have been anywhere between a year to two and a half years. Hmm. 
And Jacob joins us now live. Jacob, good morning. It's great to see you. So the Biden administration would answer the questions posed there and say, look, we've, we're 50 days in. We've been sifting through the wreckage of the Trump era policies on immigration, the policies at the border, family separation and all the things that you've been covering for several years. But is it beginning to change? Is there hope on the horizon for all those people in that extraordinary report who are standing waiting sometimes for two years to get into the country? I think the reality is, Willie. Am I wrong to see this as them shifting their position before the global migrant crisis spurred on by climate crisis is in full spring, uh, full swing? Uh, I don't even think it's like that calculated. I don't think Democrats nor the Republicans actually think in like long term planning in the fascist direction. I mean, it is definitely heading the country in that direction overall, but I wouldn't say that they are just like long-term planning like that. I think they're just thinking about it in the short term. They see that like Republicans have been pumping anti-immigrant propaganda, which they always do. It is their job to do that, by the way. This is what they fucking do. Like they do it anytime. Anytime they're like losing or anytime they feel threatened, they will go, they'll hit that fucking vein. Immigrants, 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 right? And the thing is, the thing is, um, it, that inevitably, that inevitably uh, will, will generate a lot of reactionary sentiment on the ground. People get pulled on it. People say immigration is a massive problem. Okay. And then when people are like, well, immigration is a massive problem, the, the Democrats respond in the way that they always do, which is capitulate to right-wing framing. Not yet, and, and that is not surprising, uh, quite frankly. I think there's been a lot of focus, and rightly so, on the kids in these Border Patrol facilities where the conditions are horrendous, frankly, not meant for children, and they should be moved out of there as fast as possible. Um, and that's what the Biden administration is focused on right now. But when they say, and Jen Psaki says from the podium, most of the migrants who are trying to get in right now... This is early, by the way. ...are still being kept out. Um, that is the truth, and that is what we saw down there on the border with Tijuana, particularly uh, when it comes to black migrants. Ha these Haitians here and migrants from other uh, African countries, uh, uh, excuse me, migrants from African countries who uh, have been deported in large numbers. Haitians, according to BuzzFeed News, have been deported at a rate of about 1,000 uh, in February uh, alone. I asked Secretary Mayorkas about that uh, when I interviewed him last week, and he said basically they are uh, using the tools that were left by the Trump administration to deal with people that are crossing the border. And that's the reality right now. Activists, of course, are pushing back and saying, how can anyone support restricting asylum without reducing sanctions? Is the argument just die? Is there even a talking point? Yeah, no, the argument is it's not our problem. Sucks to suck. That's what it is. That's literally what it is. All of these folks down on the border should be dealt with. They should be dealt with humanely and they should be dealt with as quickly as possible. Uh, and their asylum case, a case that should be adjudicated. So, Jacob, you know how these organizations work very well. What is reasonable for Americans to expect in terms of change, things that can be changed, and how fast they can be changed so we don't have scenes like the ones we saw in your report? Yeah, I think it's a great question, Willie. We're dealing with decades of deterrence-based, punitive-based yep. immigration policy that is not based in welcoming and humanitarianism uh, and the international concept of letting people come to seek asylum. Uh, people who are coming to the southwest border has changed, particularly over the course of the last decade. And the Biden administration has pledged to update the immigration system, the enforcement system, uh, to meet that reality. But it could take months, if not years, for them to do that in a way that deals with everybody arriving on the southern border. And this is not even accounting for, as I said in the report, the projection from World Food Program, uh, from DHS itself, that there are going to be a record number of migrants coming because of instability in Central America, poverty, food insecurity, malnutrition, things that we've discussed uh, over the years. It is a big, big task. Mm. Jacob, Eddie Glaud's here with a question for you. Eddie? Hi, Jacob. As always, just so wonderful for your just to have your reporting on this issue. Let me ask just a direct question. Thanks, Eddie. Are you seeing the beginnings of a shift in the actual policy or the approach to immigration? Or is this just simply lipstick on a pig? Because I think we need to understand, do you see the beginnings of a shift? Or are they just putting lipstick on what, we, what we've seen over the last four, over the last eight, 12 years? 
Certainly with the separation task force, uh, the intention and uh, appointment of Michelle Brunet from the Women's Refugee Commission to track down and reunite all of those still separated children, uh, absolutely. When it comes to you know this overarching rhetoric of creating a fair, safe, equitable immigration system, those are the right signs. And we are hearing the right things uh, coming out of the White House. But I, I would say that there is still only cautious optimism from, from advocates and activists. And that is because, uh, I'll give you one example, things like family detention. I heard you guys talking to Julia Ainsley uh, earlier this morning. Uh, Secretary Mayorkas told me a family detention center is no place uh, for uh, mothers, fathers, uh, and their children. They don't want to be detaining families who come here. That's sort of the way that it's going to be. And I think that they have, I mean, this is a systemic issue that is not something that is going to be solved with rhetoric. It's going to be solved with, with work, with action. Um, in some areas of immigration policy, we're seeing it. In other areas, they're saying, give us some time. Uh, we're trying to deal with the children first. Uh, you know, unravel the situation that Trump left. Yeah, uh, it's too difficult to deal with because Trump fucked it. So we are just going to fuck it more. Trump's bar on entry rule came out 11-9-2018. A district court in San Francisco blocked it 10 days later. Ninth Circuit uh, uphe uh, upheld that ruling. SCOTUS declined to stay the ruling. In a separate case in D.C., another judge found the rule unlawful. Re-upping this anticipation of a 212 executive order this week. The U.S. law says that people who arrive between ports of entry can apply for asylum. Uh, the UNHCR's comment on the circumvention of lawful pathways rules also super helpful. Even prior to this NPRM, the U.S. practice of discretionary denial of asylum was at variance with international law. Asylum is non-discretionary under international law. As in, asylum seekers are protected under international law. And this goes against that principle. This violates it completely. Hundreds of doctors demand Biden end solitary confinement in immigration prisons. That's another aspect of this. Obviously. We're creating this crisis. It's so disgusting. It's going to be solved with amnesty. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. And the irony of it all, for the record, is that amnesty is a broadly popular concept. What's also broadly popular is obviously fucking, you know, anti-immigrant sentiment, for sure. But so is amnesty. Because Americans are fucking stupid, bro. That's it. The median voter is a sea of contradictions, okay? In the weeks ahead, and I mean the weeks ahead, I'll speak to how we can make our immigration system more fair and more just. Let's fix the problem and stop fighting about it. I'm doing my part. We're doing our part. Congressional Republicans should do their part. Thank you very much. We're taking this action on June the 4th, Mr. President. The election is on September the is on November the 5th. Why did you wait so long, Mr. President, to take this action? Why did you wait so long, Mr. President, to take this action that you're taking today? What was that? I asked her, is Prime Minister Nick Gunn playing politics with the war? I don't think so. He's trying to work out a serious problem he has. Thank you. <laughs> The president there flanked by all his uh, advisors, supporters, uh, even DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, as he's talking about uh, securing the border there, announcing uh, his set of major executive actions on immigration. Of course, a, a subject, an issue, a major problem looming large over uh, the president. Is it? president's head as he uh, comes close to uh, the November election here. Um, we've got our whole panel. We've got Maria Villarreal. She's there at the southern border in El Paso, Texas. Uh, we also have Elizabeth Schulze for us at the White House, our political director, Rick Klein, with us as well, and former assistant secretary for public affairs at DHS. She works side by side advising uh, Secretary Mayorkas, Marcia Espinoza. Okay, let's start with you, Maria. You are there. Uh, let's just get right to what happens come midnight tonight. 
you know, I think the details of this are going to start to trickle down to the agents in the field. Right before uh, President Biden went on to discuss this executive action, we got a phone call from DHS basically saying, listen, we have had some very top level conversations with some of the big people that, that need to have a say and need to have a seat at the table. Eventually, this information will get down and trickle down to the agents that are out in the field. So I think that's what we're waiting for right now to see exactly what the details will be and how it can not only impact the agents in the field, but also uh, the nonprofit organizations and the city leaders that deal with this on a day to day basis. I have to say, Kira, though, there were a couple of things that stuck out to me quite a bit. Um, there was a reference to the fact that this will be for people that, that do not come through a legal port of entry or use the CBP-1 app. We have to clarify that both of those options for migrants trying to request asylum here in the U.S. don't always work the way the administration has intended them to. I mean, there is a minimal amount of appointments on that CBP-1 app. In the beginning, there were a lot I just heard you say streaming is soul sucking. You've obviously never worked at Amazon. You're such a clown. What the fuck? Bro works at Amazon, so he's fucking tuning in from a Motorola Razor phone. Talking about drama from a clipped out of context clip from literally. From literally fucking eight months ago at this point. That's awesome. Brother, I don't know if you work with Amazon, but. Um, uh, I, I, maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't actually know that, but uh, one, I do technically work for Amazon, even though I'm a incredibly fucking well-paid, contracted uh, laborer for Amazon. Technically, that is who is paying me uh, at the end of the day. But I don't know if you know this or not, but I routinely work with unions of hired Amazon workers in unionization efforts. But also beyond that, like active Amazon labor unions uh, that currently exist. So I feel like uh, other employees of Amazon definitely appreciate the work that we put in here in this community. So weren't you like the top donor of the Amazon union? Not the top donor, but the top individual donor. Like I donated... Uh, you know, with the help of this community, ultimately. I was the largest individual donor. Oh. But hey, you know, if you are the unfollowed, they won't chat again. Well, that's sad. Brother, these people don't work jobs. They come in here to say that, to derail you again. It's okay. There might be people that don't know. You know what I mean? A lot of glitches with that app, a lot of concerns that were flagged by nonprofit organizations, and also the ports of entry. They have a certain number of people that they allow to come through on a daily basis to request asylum. So the idea that you only have those two options is very daunting to this group of asylum seekers that will likely be coming through uh, areas that are not ports of entry, that are not going to be through the CBP-1 app. One other thing that really stuck out to me uh, in today's discussion, amongst many things, is also the intent intent for the president to specifically reference the relationship that we have really tried to harness with Mexico. Before we went on over the last few hours, we've had conversations with nonprofit organizations all along the southwest border. They talk about how the apprehension numbers right now are at a very low amount. It's manageable for them right now, but they truly believe that that has happened over the last two or three months because of the efforts that we have seen from the secretary from Secretary Blinken and as well as from DHS uh, Secretary Mayorkas, them coming together, working closely with the immigration officials in Mexico as well to come up. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong, but when you write, you talk like a god, haha, -ha, question mark. I don't know what you mean by that, but it is pretty funny. It is pretty funny to come in here and be like, I'm an Amazon worker and I fucking hate you, dog. You fucking piece of shit. It's like, it's definitely one company that I have, uh, worked actively with unionization efforts on so it's like weird for someone to be like i fucking hate you bro guys that would fucking kill me on sight or hope that i remain destitute and poor told me that you're actually bad President for Biden. labor it's like it's fine man i'm on your side regardless of whatever you feel about the situation all right hassan's amazon driver 
Um, unfortunately, that clip of you saying streaming is soul sucking was just awful optics for normies. I don't give a shit. I don't. Like, if normies see that clip and think, well, you know, Google Hassan Amazon for more information, I guess, is what I would say to them. Google Hassan Amazon Labor Union for more information. You know? Like, normies are like, yeah, fuck this guy. What what, what, what do normies, what, what are normies doing? Uh, yeah, also, those aren't normies. Those are motherfuckers with, like, Twitter brain rot. So, they can suck me. Most people don't know what the fuck that take is. Most people don't know who the fuck I am in general. And set to issue an executive order on immigration that will give them the power to temporarily close the border and limit the number of people seeking asylum in the U.S. Rachel Scott is at the White House with the latest. Good morning, Rachel. George, good morning to you. And it's been months since that bipartisan border deal collapsed on Capitol Hill. We know the president has been evaluating ways that he can move forward on his own, now preparing to announce his toughest action yet. This morning, sources say President Biden is expected to unveil his most aggressive action on immigration yet, planning to sign an executive order that effectively shuts down the border for asylum seekers when migrant crossings surge. We need to continue to get the federal government to help us out because otherwise it, we wouldn't be able to do this. Sources tell ABC News when daily encounters reach 2,500 between ports of entry, asylum seekers would be turned away with some exceptions for children. When I searched the top result was a r slash d thread. Okay, bro. No, there's a million other fucking results in there. I looked at it here. I just clicked on it too. Yeah, the first result is is this. But guess what, dude? Even the fucking Washington Free Beacon, which is a right wing uh, website, or a million different fucking links that you can click on here, where you can find, you know, actual the the actual. Uh, realities of the matter <laughs> amazon labor union bleeds money as workers turn on founder who praised hamas wait what this is a new article i guess that just came out no, the union received eight hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars in donations in 2022 with contributions from american federation of teachers through a gofundme fundraiser progressive pundit hassan piker and donations from other labor unions children the move could have an immediate impact Migrant crossings have averaged 3,500 a day in recent weeks. Biden has faced repeated attacks from Donald Trump and Republican lawmakers over his handling of the border. Border Patrol, I know him so well. They endorsed me every, they always endorse me. They said when Trump comes back, it'll all be better. But the Border Patrol Union endorsed a bipartisan border deal that Trump urged Republicans to reject. For months, President Biden weighing how he could act on his own. There's no guarantee that I have that power all by myself without legislation. And some are suggesting I should just go ahead and try it. But now some Democrats calling that a mistake, accusing the president of caving to Republican pressure in an election year. What is concerning is the precedent that it potentially sets. We're basically giving the right wing some of the things that they want without delivering for our community. Four years ago, Biden promised to undo the immigration policies of the Trump administration and create a safe haven for asylum seekers in the United States. Some of those progressive Democrats are demanding that the president hold firm on the type of immigration comprehensive reform that he campaigned on. But that would obviously take some bipartisan support. And Republicans just are not on board for that, George. Rachel, this order will face a court challenge. Yeah, administration officials are keenly aware that this will be challenged in court, but they also know that we are five months out from an election and the president's approval ratings on this issue are extremely low. He's been under immense pressure to get something done on this issue, George. Now on the border. Later today, President Biden is expected to... Yeah, the real disgrace is not the fact that Biden is now doing a fucking migrant killing bill, even though he ran against it successfully and won an election. But instead, the Republicans are not, uh, you know, engaging with the border, uh, engaging with the migrant murder bill. Okay, it's really fucked up. That's a real disgrace, guys. I'm so mad that the, the, the Republican Party, once again, is cucking us. Pretty funny to think about when this identical situation happened under the Obama administration for cutting Social Security. Okay, here. I will now tell you a story about the time Republicans, specifically the Tea Party, which is like identical to the 
current wave of the Republican MAGA supporters in, in the House that killed this border bill. Hold on. Here it is from Washington Post from February 21st, 2014. Liberals didn't kill Obama's social security cuts. Republicans did. Damn, this guy's good. <laughs> 